Okay, great. Yeah, so obviously, as Renee and Carrie mentioned, this is what we're here to talk about, um, as you know, and this is really my specialty. Um, and of course, I know that everyone is busy. I'm just so appreciative that you all are here with me tonight. And thank you to Renee for having me. I, I love talking about this. This is my passion. This is what I do for a living, obviously, but it really is a passion for me. Um, and I did struggle with adult acne as well, which I'll mention a little bit later on when I give you a quick introduction. Um, but because I really respect your time, I just want to give you a quick agenda, everything that we'll be discussing tonight, um, because if nothing else, you know, if you have nothing else on your plate, you could be watching. I know last night's episode of This Is Us was a very good one. <laughs> so we'll be doing a quick introduction. We'll talk about the conventional approach to acne and why it fails so many women, especially adult women with acne. Um, because so many, you know, acne products and the conventional approach to acne is really tailored to teenage acne, unfortunately. And so many, many women, especially the ones I work with, they're in their late twenties, they're in their thirties, even in their forties, and they've been struggling for years and years. Um, and it's because this conventional approach really fails so many of us. Uh, then we'll talk about the making of a zit and then the formula for clear skin and then five first steps to clear your skin from within. And so looking at that diet acne connection. Um, and so some five first steps that you can take, you know, immediately, you know, tonight or tomorrow. Um, and I should say too, that the why is so important to me. I will never just tell you eat this or eat that and never give you an excellent ex explanation because it's really important that you understand the way that your body and your skin work and these connections. And so why you might want to be taking some of these um, first steps. Okay. So a quick introduction. Again, I'm just so ha happy to be here with you tonight. Thank you so much for taking your time and for having me. And so I am a nutritional therapy practitioner, as Renee mentioned, who specializes in female adult acne. I'm also the founder of the Healthy Living website, Body Unburdened, which is how Renee and I first met ages ago. We were joking about how the, the first time we talked, she had just had her um, youngest child who is now six, which is just blowing my, my mind. Um, and so I've had the blog for almost a decade now, which is crazy. Um, and it really focuses on a holistic lifestyle, li living a holistic lifestyle, natural beauty and natural skincare included. I'm also the author of the book, Glow, The Nutritional Approach to Naturally Gorgeous Skin, which maybe hopefully you have sitting on your bookshelf at home, or maybe you'd be interested in getting after our talk tonight. Um, and then I also have a natural skincare line. So the body unburdened skincare line, because as much as I am very, you know, a full, full believer in the inside out approach to skin health, you can't forget the topical approach as well. Um, and so like Renee, I believe in really simple, natural ingredients and really just, you know, supporting your skin's natural functions um, with natural and simple ingredients. And so that is what we're giving away. I have a face oil blend specifically formulated for acne prone skin, and it is my bestseller for sure, has a little cult following among my customers. And so I'm happy to give that away to one of, one of you all on the call today. And so my goal in the work that I do is to help my clients look and feel their absolute best, because as Carrie mentioned, you know, the skin really is a mirror that reflects what's happening on the inside. Um, and so we don't tend to think of it as going so hand in hand, you know, the way that we look and the way that we feel most of my clients come to me, they're sick and tired of struggling with acne, it affects their confidence. And they don't realize that it's also, you know, the same root causes of their breakouts and acne are also maybe draining them draining them of their energy, um, causing them to have irregular or really painful periods, um, you know, even lack of sleep at night, persistent weight gain, things like that. There's all these varied connections, right? And the root cause is usually the same things that are causing their breakouts are causing these other symptoms as well. And so again, helping them to look and feel their best, it really goes hand in hand. And so how we do this is we first of all want to identify the root causes of their breakouts and acne. So why are you breaking out in the first place? That's always the biggest question, especially when you've been struggling for so long. It's, you know, why is this happening to me? I'm trying to eat so health, healthy, healthfully. I'm using all the best skincare products. Why is this still happening? So we want to identify those root causes and then set them right. And I want to say too, that this is an approach that's really rooted in science and it's highly individualized. So it's not about, you know, just because it's an, a holistic approach and it might be, alter, you know, an alternative option than the more conventional approach, you know, from prescriptions and, um, you know, the purely topical approach, it doesn't mean that it's just, you know, hold this crystal and your skin is going to magically heal. It really is rooted in the, the science of nutrition and the biochemistry of our female bodies and the biochemistry of our skin and the interconnectedness of those because I'm very nerdy about skin. <laughs> As I mentioned, I struggled with acne. So it was actually my early 20s. So I had perfectly clear skin all throughout my teens. And it was probably because 
I was prescribed hormonal birth control at 16 because I had irregular periods. Um, and I was on it until my early 20s when I made the choice to stop. And my skin went crazy. You know, it, it the, when you're on the hormonal birth control pill, it, it provides a really steady stream of synthetic hormones. And now all of a sudden my body was producing its own hormones again. And so I had terrible, terrible acne. Um, and it really threw me to, through a tailspin. And obviously, you know, long story short, that's why I'm so passionate about skin health and helping other women, um, you know, clear their acne with a holistic approach. And we will talk more about that. If anybody is struggling with the post birth control breakout, it is extremely common. I would say most of my clients, um, that's what they're, they're, they're struggling with or something related to hormones, some sort of hormonal acne like PCOS as well, as I know somebody in the comments mentioned. And I really just think that understanding the science aspect of this. So again, I would never just tell you, you know, eat blueberries or salmon and drink your green tea and, you know, send you off on your way. Again, I really want to be explaining why this is so important for your skin um, and, and your body, because I really just think that understanding your body and your skin in this way is really empowering. Struggling with any sort of health issue um, is, it can feel really disempowering. And that's definitely the case, you know, if you've been struggling with acne for a while, it can feel very disempowering. Um, and so I want you to better understand what's happening, how we can solve it, so that you really feel empowered to take control over your body and your health, body and your skin, I should say. And it's exactly what I want for all of you ladies on the call today or gentlemen as well. Um, I really just want you to feel empowered to bring balance back to your body and skin. And I share this testimonial only because it's one of my favorites and Karen was struggling with acne for I think over a decade and by the time we started working together. And so it's just really a testament to the fact that there is a solution out there. And as we're going to talk, talk about, it's really that sometimes that conventional approach keeps us from finding the right solution, unfortunately. Um, but when, when we can dive in deep and find those root causes, that's when you can finally achieve clarity. And I love that she says it's given her so much more confidence and personal peace. Again, it's that empowerment. Um, and we, we know, you know, even the most confident of, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like if you give them acne, it can really take a toll on your confidence. All right. And I'm not sure if anybody had any questions, if I should check in. But again, uh, Renee and Carrie, feel free to interrupt. All right. So I mentioned a few times there, I think that the conventional approach does tend to fail us. So I'm not sure if anybody here who has been struggling with acne has ever talked to your dermatologist and asked them, you know, does my diet impact my skin in any way? And if you have, it's more likely than not that your, your, you know, your dermatologist has said, no, go ahead, eat whatever you want. There is no connection there. And so that's not surprising because the conventional approach is mostly focused on, you know, it, 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 it views acne as a topical condition with purely topical solutions. Oops. Um, but we can't forget at the, you know, if we we're gonna just bullet, proof, proof, bullet it at the most basic level, we can't forget that the skin is the body's largest organ and the body is one complex and interconnected system. And there are studies upon studies, because again, I am very nerdy about this. I have read them. I have researched this to no end. Um, there are studies and studies that tell us and demonstrate that the food that we eat, things happening within our bodies are impacting our skin even more so than, you know, the products that we're using on our skin. And so that's to me why it just never even makes sense. Why are, why does the conventional approach ignore this science? And sometimes it will take a more internal approach with things like antibiotics or hormonal birth control or medications like spironolactone. Um, again, anybody who's struggling with, with PCOS or hormonal acne, that's, that's a really common medication that specifically suppresses acne causing hormones that we'll talk about in just a bit. Um, those approaches, they, while they're internal, they're typically much more still band-aid approaches, right? Because it's not helping to bring balance back to your body in any way. And so it's so frustrating because you might be on antibiotics or hormonal birth control and spironolactone or spironolactone, and you might see clarity while you're on those medications, but then you might stop them and you might break out again. And of course they don't come without side effects. And so it's no wonder why so many women will struggle, struggle for so long. And again, myself included in that, and my heart goes out to, to anyone, please know that you're not alone. It's actually, the statistic is actually 50% of all women experience acne as adults. So it's definitely, um, you know, not just you. But now let's go ahead and let's look at the making of a zit. So starting to get more into a little bit of the science of things. 
So a spoiler here is that bacteria is just one small part of the equation. Usually when we think about acne, we think about bacteria, right? There's so many antibacterial face washes with benzoyl peroxide and um, you know, e even antibiotics, it's targeting bacteria, right? But the thing is also everyone's skin actually has the same bad bacteria on it living within our skin microbiome. And that's not something we're gonna talk about today, but the microbiome is also fascinating and it's a really important aspect of um, acne as well, especially from the topical standpoint. And the thing is, you know, when everything is going as it should, when our skin is healthy, our body is healthy, everything, you know, our skin is clear, our skin produces oil and our skin cells are shedding, but everything moves up and out of the pore with no problem, right? So this, the skin has its own exfoliation process. Our skin cells should be shedding. Our skin has its own moisturization process. Our skin should be producing oil. There's absolutely no problem with that. Um, but the problem, you know, comes when instead we have an excess production of oil and impaired skin shedding within the cells um, or cell shedding within the pore. And that's called hyperkeratinization for anybody who's equally as nerdy as I am or wants to take notes and, you know, fact check things or, or double, you know, continue the research after this. It's called hyperkeratinization. And we know that these are sort of the first building blocks of acne. Oh, and so what I should say is we know this, right? And the conventional approach even is aware of this, but whereas they focus on maybe trying to calm oil production, even with some like to topical retinols or um, Accutane, things like that, um, or whatever, whatever else they might be prescribing, what it is ignoring is the fact that there are certain things happening with our bodies. So hormones, um, you know, elevated levels of hormones, other things happening with our bodies that we're going to talk about inflammation, um, that can actually cause your oil production to go up and cause that hyperkeratinization process or that impaired skin cell shedding within the pore. And so that's what we want to be focusing on. Again, that is the real root cause, right? This is sort of when we look at this, this is almost the symptom, right? And we always want to be taking that root cause approach, which I do believe Carrie is a sign you have right behind you. <laughs> so that was one thing that um, I don't believe Renee shared when she introduced us was that I am a functional medicine certified health coach. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. I have a quick oh. question. Um, this, this slide that you just had. Yes. Does it, so that first part, does it, are you, are we aware of that when that's already happening or do is it when the actual zit comes, then we see it? Like, is there a little precursor? Like, Oh, I see this coming because maybe my face is oily or is, is it kind of a sequence? Um, I mean, it sort of goes hand in hand, right? Like if you're experiencing breakouts and acne, this is what's happening within the skin. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious if it's like, <laughs> can you get a clue that it's coming on and, or, do you see it after the fact if it's, a, yeah, and then I think more after the fact, um, if anything, most times our warning sign is more like, Oh, my period is coming or, you know, for women who experience cyclical acne. Um, but yes, when we do break out it, this is what's happening within the, within the cell or within okay. the pore. And of course, that's not to say there can't be, you know, other gunk and debris if you're touching your face, things like that. Right. Um, but when we're looking at, you know, actual, not, not just, um, comedogenic acne, which is something causing a, a, an external um, factor causing the pore to be clogged. This is actually, you know, biochemical acne, I should say. Okay, so now looking at the formula for clear skin. And I should say, you know, if only I had a dollar for every client who came to me and said, or every lady who's came to me and said, but I eat so clean, you know, I eat so clean. Well, first of all, what does clean eating mean? I hate that term because it can mean so many different things. If you're a vegan, if you're paleo, if you're, you know, this, that. Um, and so it's just a really confusing term, uh, but also it just really isn't targeted enough. And so I think that advice like this is a bunch of garbage. Um, it's really confusing. And so you might look to something like this and say, okay, great. I just need to have this clear skin cucumber juice every day and I'm going to be great. Um, but unfortunately that's not the way it works. So we want to take instead a very targeted approach. So again, we want to look at these root causes of acne that stem from within. And we want to take a very targeted approach with diet lifestyle and supplements. And we'll be looking at diet mostly today, but also a little bit with lifestyle. And then we also wanna couple this with a really gentle but effective topical skincare routine that helps to balance, soothe and heal the skin. Okay, so now moving on to the, the meat of things. 
So five first steps to clearing your skin from within. The number one, I would say by far, is balancing your blood sugar levels. And it, let me know if this surprises you, if that this is the very first step, if you expected some sort of particular food um, or supplement, something like that. But I will say, especially when it comes to hormonal acne, absolutely, we need to look to our blood sugar levels. And most people, you know, when I say this, they say, but I'm not diabetic or, you know, something along that lines. We tend to think um, that blood sugar is only related to people who have diabetes and that could not be further from the truth. Balanced, healthy blood sugar levels or, you know, healthy balanced blood sugar levels are essential for us to maintain, you know, good health. And they're really especially important for healthy skin, obviously, but energy, weight management, um, our mood even. And so it's really important for all of us to be looking at. So the issue is when our blood sugar levels are imbalanced. So spikes and crashes in our blood sugar levels, which actually is most people, I should say, um, even when you're eating a healthier, clean diet, as we'll talk about in just a second. And the issue here is that these blood sugar spikes can cause a spike in two proven acne-causing hormones. So they're called IGF-1 and androgens. And androgens are the biggest and baddest hormones when it comes to acne. So just remember sort of this domino effect of imbalanced blood sugar levels, cause androgen levels to go up, cause acne and breakouts, particularly hormonal acne. And our androgen receptors are primarily located in our chin and jawline. So if you happen to break out in your chin and jawline, especially that's likely, likely hormonal acne. Um, and that's the reason why that area is considered a telltale sign of hormonal acne. So breaking out in that area. So can I hop in and ask a quick question, Nadia? Mm -hmm. So what about intermittent fasting? And how does that affect blood sugar levels in people? That's a great question. I'm not surprised you would ask that. And I wonder if you, what kind of tool you use it in your own um, practice. I think that for the right individual, it can be really a really great tool. I wouldn't recommend it for somebody struggling with hormonal acne because any sort of hormonal imbalance, I, I, especially for women, so many of the studies that show that intermittent fasting, all the benefits of intermittent fasting, like it, it solves everything, right? Like if you hear about intermittent fasting, it can sort of seem to kind of like it. there's an oil for everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of them are done on men and men's hormones. Think about it. are really like this. And women were like this all throughout our cycles. Then you get pregnant and then, you, then it's postpartum. It's always changing. Um, and so, yeah, I don't recommend it for women who show any symptom of hormonal imbalance to begin with. And that's typically the case with acne. If that answers your question, I just think it needs to be done smartly and with the right person. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay. So in the culprit here, you know, what's causing these imbalanced blood sugar levels. So usually it's looking at diet. So it could be a diet heavy in sugar, but also carbs. Um, and I think that's really important to note that it's even, you know, real whole food, whole food sources of carbs, like grains, starchy veggies, sweet fruits. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with these at all. Um, I don't want you to kick out all carbs from your diet. We certainly don't want that. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, if you're having a sort of imbalanced plate, that's really carb heavy, it could still be causing these spikes and crashes in blood sugar. Also stress, lack of sleep, skipping meals. And again, this is why, you know, just clean eating really isn't enough because you could be eating mangoes and strawberries all day. And sure, that might be very clean. Um, but what you're doing is spiking your blood sugar levels constantly with that. And so what you can start doing today is balancing your carb intake with protein and fat with each meal and each snack. And I'm going to start, I'm going to try to hurry up. I realize I'm just on tip number, you know, our first step number one, and we're already 25 minutes in. So I'm going to try to speed through these and let me know if I should just cut off at any point, Renee. Well, before you get rolling, we do have one person who was wondering how they monitor their blood sugar levels and that she just doesn't know how to do it. Sure. That's a great question. And I don't expect that you would be, you know, investing in like a blood sugar monitor or pricking your finger <laughs> multiple times a day. Um, what's really important is just to know how to do it. Um, so really making sure that your plate is suited, you know, your plate is properly and that your plate, I should say what you're eating, what you're eating is um, properly balanced in terms of, again, here, this tip, your intake of protein, fats, and healthy carbs. Um, look at your energy levels throughout the day, things like that, um, making sure that you're not doing anything like fasted exercise, you're eating breakfast in the morning. Um, there are sort of these basic essentials to begin with. Um, and with that, that will, will set you down the, a, a good path. Um, and I don't know who is asking this. I can't see the chat, honestly, or, or I can't see the chat right now with my screen up. Um, but no problem. It's Miranda. Okay. Cause I was going to say, I know somebody else had chimed in with P a PCOS question or mentioned they have PCOS. 
imbalanced blood sugar levels, you know, insulin resistance is very common in women with PCOS. And so is it any wonder, right, that then women with PCOS really struggle with acne? It, again, it's sort of this domino effect. So it's, you know, the insulin resistance, the imbalanced blood sugar levels, androgens, and then acne um, with PCOS 100%. This is where you want to be looking. Okay, now number two is to up those antioxidants. And maybe just, this was the one you expected me to start with. Um, but studies have actually found that acne patients, you know, people with acne, they have lower anti antioxidant levels than people who don't struggle with acne. And for whatever reason, they really just don't know the exact reason. It could be that the skin is demanding more antioxidants um, to help fight the acne, but for whatever reason, levels are lower and they are quite significantly lower. Look at this, 33% of 33% lower in vitamin A, 40% lower in vitamin C, 45% lower in vitamin E. And this is a big problem because we know that sebum oxidation is a big contributing factor to acne. And so basically what happens is your sebum, so your skin's own oil is oxidizing. When that happens, it becomes really sticky and pore clogging. Again, going back to that first part of that um, making of a zit formula. Um, and it just, it, you know, it's, it's clogging your pore. It's going to be causing breakouts and acne. And so we certainly don't want to be sort of exacerbating this aspect of the, pro the process of the formula. And so what's contributing here? So the standard American diet, you know, if you're eating primarily processed foods, I would think that that's not honestly the case of mo most of you on the call today, knowing, um, you know, that you're, you're um, a, a made on a customer and, you know, put more focus on health, uh, but even including more refined vegetable oils or canola oil, or just a diet lacking in fruits and vegetables. Yeah, so my tip here is just to up those antioxidants, you know, look to include at least six to eight different types of fruits and vegetables each day. And if you think this sounds excessive, I sometimes challenge my clients to get 15 in, <laughs> which is excessive, but it's a fun challenge. Um, and if you're interested and open to doing so, maybe swapping your coffee for green tea or matcha. And please don't come at me with all the studies that you have with how coffee's high in antioxidants. <laughs> Okay, number three is to balance those cortisol levels. And we typically think of court, you know, when we think of cortisol, we think of stress because cortisol is the body's primary stress hormone. And the thing with cortisol is just like with androgens, it's increasing the skin's oil production. It's impairing the way that there, our skin cells are shedding within the pore, so that hyperkeratinization process. Um, but also it can raise, it raises blood sugar levels and it can throw our sex hormones off balance. So this is mostly with lifestyle, right? Stress, lack of sleep, over-exercising, sources of chronic physical stress like digestive issues, which we'll talk about next. And then also caffeine does cause a spike in cortisol. Yes, please stop talking about coffee. You're getting me hot flashes, <laughs> just hearing the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, my tip here in terms of diet, again, you can start instead, you know, meditating, doing whatever you can to start relaxing, sleeping through the night. Sleep is absolutely essential, going to give you the beauty sleep is absolutely real. It's going to help your skin in every way, shape, and form. Um, but if you want to swap your coffee for green tea or matcha, oh, it cut off my A here, or at least saving your caffeinated beverage for after you first of all rehydrate. You always want to rehydrate when you first wake up and then have a nice blood sugar balancing breakfast. Again, remember proteins, fats, fiber, um, saving your coffee for after that, because that's providing you with a nice healthy baseline. Okay. And number four is supporting your gut. So the gut and the skin have been called two sides of the same coin, and it might not seem, you know, so, um, intuitive at first. And I know Renee, you have a, another call coming up in just a couple of weeks, I think, um, the discussion between leaky gut and your skin, and that's going to be really interesting. Um, and so the issue here is, you know, poor digestion and an imbalanced gut microbiome. And what this can do is create chronic inflammation within the body. Also constipation um, impacts hormonal balance. And I don't have this, this written here, but it should be here, um, is that there's this connection that's still being explored between the gut microbiome and the skin microbiome. And again, you know, there's good and bad bacteria living on the skin. We need a healthy balance on the skin. We need a healthy balance on the gut. And there's some science that, you know, is pointing to the fact that, you know, when the gut is imbalanced, it could be impacting the skin. So here we're looking at, you know, a poor diet, but also food intolerances, hormonal birth control can impact your gut as well. Antibiotics, stress, the irony here is that hormonal birth control and antibiotics, you might be prescribed them for acne um, and they can actually make your, your gut a little bit, um, you know, worse for the wear and, and, and in doing so prolong your skin issues. And then one of the, my best tips here is, you know, eating slowly and mindfully and chewing your food. Of course, we can also do things like probiotics, digestive enzymes, um, but really we also want to look at how we eat. And that's an essential step that I think so many people miss out on, especially if you're really busy, you're always rushing to work on the go. Um, we can just sort of like inhale our meals. And that's actually one of the very first, you know, things that we need to look at.
when it comes to improving our gut health. Okay, and then fifth and final, I'm getting there, <laughs> is to love your liver. And again, this is especially a really important one when it comes to hormonal um, acne as well. And so the issue here is just an overburdened liver. The liver is responsible for over 500 processes within the body. It does a lot of work within our bodies, and we unfortunately put a lot of stress on it with stress, sugar, refined diets, what, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and again, this can create a hormonal imbalance because the liver does detox um, excess and used hormones. And so it's really essential for hormonal balance. Um, and it also impairs detoxification and can interrupt blood sugar regulation. And so this is exposure to environmental toxins on a daily basis. Obviously, if you're using Renee's products, um, you know, you're helping to you, you cut out one of our big sources of um, a burden on our liver. But also there's, you know, a lot of environmental toxins, um, unhealthy fats here again, alcohol, birth control and other medications. Um, and I just, should just say too, there's also some science that show that some, some people with acne just have genetic variations that prevent their liver from detoxing efficiently. And so of course, then we want to be supporting liver detoxification. And so what you can start doing today is, you know, start your day with a pint of warm water with the juice from half a lemon squeezed in. Um, it's as simple as that. It provides you with some vitamin C to help cleanse the liver. And also just that rehydrating right off the bat um, is really essential for your, your body overall, but for your liver as well. And so I was going to go into topicals here, but I think we should cut it off <laughs> uh, for a given time. So... That was fantastic. That was really informative. And I, I keep seeing, see, I mean, I know you all are going to say, well, Renee, you have nine kids, but if you, I see that hormonal birth control being a real problem, you guys. So anyway, that is, I think one of those. Oh my gosh. Are, <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> I have a flash. <laughs> no, I just think it's hysterical. Like, yeah. that was just so funny. Anyway, but I wanted, but, but one thing that's really important with this though, is be, because I remember that when I was in high school too, that's what was recommended if you had acne. And so it's just, you need to find out a lot of those triggers, but especially if you can tell just not only for ourselves as moms and so on, but our teenage daughters too. It's like, just if they can figure out how to get the stress and, and the diet and all of those factors under control when they are 17, 18, 20, then they won't have a lot of the same issues that we've had growing up too. So I think that's, that's really important to pass that on to the next generation. So um, a lot of this information, I mean, I don't remember having it when I was in high school, it would have been nice to know a lot about how much diet stress and so on affects the skin. So anyway, thank you for doing that. The, and I know, I think we had a couple questions come in. Carrie, do you have any off the top of your head that were in the chat? Um, no, we um, I didn't see any other questions come in. Okay. Actually. And you covered the, um, also I want to put some of those links in Nadia. You have, you, you actually work with clients then one-on-one -on -one in addition to some of the products that you have in your store. So can you give us a quick example? You had a testimonial from someone in the UK. So you must not work only in person. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's mostly remote um, and COVID sort of pushed it to be <laughs> fully remote or fairly, you know, virtual. And say so, yeah, I've worked with clients from South Africa, Canada, the UK, um, so all over the place. And yeah, again, specifically the work that we do is, first of all, we do a sort of deep dive into your health, but also lifestyle. I want to know how you're sleeping. I want to know how your emotions are. I want to know your stress levels. Um, and we sort of do a deep dive into your, your health, take the whole holistic picture, um, you know, dig and investigate to find those root causes of your breakouts and acne. Usually it's not too difficult to do. We don't usually even have to run tests in order to do that. Sometimes we will do that. Um, if we think that it's going to be important. Um, and then we, create a plan to set things right, both from an internal um, perspective, but then topical as well. As I mentioned, I was going to mention the topical. Um, it's really important that you also have a topical routine that's tailored to you and your skin as well. Um, because for example, you know, especially with um, more adult women, those products that are aim aimed at more teenage acne, it's not going to do our skin any favors. You know, it's going to dry us out and in doing so cause, as you know, the issues with dry skin um, with that, you know, inflammation, irritation, that's only going to make breakouts worse. Um, so again, taking a really tailored approach, um, both internally and topically. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, it's going to be the prize tonight and um, Carrie, when, let me know when you're ready with the, the um, wheel and we'll, we'll do that too. Can you tell us more about what's in that product and sure. how to use it and, and all of that? Sure. So this is my beauty blend number two. So I have three beauty blends and they're face oil blends. Um, but the thing is you might think of a face oil and first of all say, oh my gosh, 
oil should stay far, far away from my skin if I have breakouts and acne. Um, but that couldn't be further than the truth. They were choosing the right oils. And studies actually show us that the oil, uh, the, the sebum, right? So the oil that our skin is producing, uh, people who are, are more breakout prone or, or ha struggle with acne is deficient in a certain type of fatty acid called linoleic acid. And that by supplementing with it topically, so applying this linoleic acid topically, it helps to reduce breakouts and acne. And so this blend is specifically high in oils that are high in linoleic acid. Um, so I'll just tell you grape, grape seed, pumpkin seed are the two like primary um, ingredients in that as well as some um, essential oils too to help a really safe gentle amount of essential oils to help naturally calm inflammation um, or I should yeah calm inflammation and um, uh, you know manage bacteria as well. And when's the best time to apply it? <laughs> You could use it morning or night, um, but you would use it more liberally in the evening and, um, you know, more sparingly during the day, um, just because, especially if you're using any sort of make makeup. Um, and I do just recommend, like, if you, if you absolutely love it, uh, using more of a powder foundation rather than a liquid foundation with an oil. Okay. Yeah. And Elba's asking, is it also good for teenage acne? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we actually, that's what we had a few people ask about um, in their, in their older teenagers, how, so do, would, well, probably a lot of the foods that they eat would contribute to better skin and health. How would your advice to that age group be different or would it, yeah. How would you answer that sure. question? So it's hard because, so I, I do specialize in adult, you know, female adult acne, just because it is very different, right? When we're teenagers, our hormones are kind of like this, right? And we know that acne is not the only symptom. <laughs> There's also mood swings and everything else. Um, but, you know, looking again to, I would, I would support, um, you know, looking to support liver detoxification, just very gently, you know, um, balance blood sugar levels, you're not gonna, you don't have to ask them to go like paleo or vegan or anything extreme. But it's about, you know, maybe educating about, you know, how to plan your plate, how what to choose what at school from the cafeteria, um, things like that. That's, again, the absolute first and most important step when it comes to hormonal acne. And that's what most teenage acne is. Um, and then of course, topicals are very, very important when it comes to teenage acne as well. Can I sneak in a question? Cause actually I had a text to me, um, from a friend who was asking about baby acne. Do you have any recommendations for I know that's a completely no. different, but you have a baby. <laughs> it's so funny that you asked that because my baby had terrible baby acne. And I was like, this is so ironic. And I, I just felt so bad for him. And it was really bad. He actually has some scarring now. Um, but that's just their little bodies detoxing your hormones, right. That are in your milk and everything. Um, and as far as I know, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You don't really want to be applying anything. Right. That's kind like of what I think that. I was thinking too, is not to try to apply anything yeah. to that. And could it potentially be a food trigger from mom if it's, if it's a breastfed baby or. That's a great question. I mean, we know with reflux, it usually is mom, right. Um, if the baby is breastfed, um, I actually don't know. I just know that I, from what I understand, it's the baby detoxing your hormones um, that okay. are through the breast milk. So just get through it and not worry about it. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. That sounds good to me. And, and I, then, I should say I'm not, I'm not the expert there. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. And Nadia, do you just, you just work with women, not men? Yeah. Like I explained, I mean, first of all, I just love working with women. It, it's a personal struggle of, you know, it was a personal struggle of mine. I just, it, that's what I, what I prefer. Um, but again, you know, male hormones are like this and women's are like this. We really can't compare the two. And so I just feel like I can, I can help women most effectively if, most effectively and best. Um, but some of these foundations here too, you know, they definitely do apply to men. Those androgen hormones are actually considered, considered the male hormones, but women have them just like men have estrogens, right? Um, even though estrogens are considered the female hormones. Um, and they're primarily what's causing breakouts and acne in men too, unless it's some sort of topical imbalance. A lot of women come to me, um, and say, Oh, you know, my husband or my boyfriend has, you know, terrible acne and it can actually be something called, um, melisazia folliculitis or fungal acne. Um, it's really common. Oh, somebody actually mentioned that her twins have acne all over their back. It could be fungal acne. It's very common, especially in men who like play a lot of sports, maybe don't shower right away afterwards or change their shirts. You know, like if you're teenagers or out at getting sweaty, playing basketball, and then just hanging with their friends. Um, it's a fungal overgrowth that looks a lot like acne, but it's a totally different beast. Um, and so, yeah. And the best for that would just, just to shower. Is that enough? Or it's, it's I shouldn't say hygiene. Like it's not like you have bad hygiene if you have it. Cause a lot of women, women have it too. Um, or they might have a combination of malassezia and, and traditional acne, but, um, yes, I, hygiene without making that sound bad. <laughs> um, but I'll,
So the topicals can be really helpful there as well because you're wanting to control the fungal overgrowth. Um, so whereas I'm all about the internal approach with mouse as folliculitis, it really is more of a topical approach with that. Um, yeah, and there's certain ingredients that make it go wild. So if you have malassezia on your face, this is just a side note for any woman who might be listening to this or, or man who might be listening to this and thinking like, oh my gosh, this might, this might be what I am struggling with. Um, you have to be really careful with your topicals because some ingredients actually feed the fungus, um, whereas others starve it and actually calm the skin, calm the inflammation, bring balance, which is what we want. Oh, that's interesting. So that was really interesting what you said about the jawbone. Are there any other like little tips that you might know if it's like I was yeah. saying earlier, the forehead or anything that's interesting like that. Yeah. And we, we hear a lot about face mapping. I'm sure if you've, you know, struggled with acne and you're on this call, you may have heard about face mapping before. And there's something to that. Um, especially again, that area around the mouth and jawline telltale sign of hormonal acne. A lot of people were very confused when COVID started and mask knee became a thing because they were like, is this mask knee or do I all of a sudden have hormonal acne? It was very confusing and difficult. Um, but anyways, yeah, really angry, deep cystic acne higher up in the cheeks. I usually see that with more inflammatory acne. So, and especially with um, chronic digestive issues and gut issues, especially gut imbalances. So with that, sometimes um, it might be really helpful to do more like GI testing after you, I should say, after you've done the basic foundational work to help bring balance back to your digestive system and microbiome, that can sometimes be beneficial. Again, that really deep acne. Um, and on your forehead, um, it tends to be more like liver and digestive health as well. Um, so I don't really... I don't, wouldn't rely on face mapping. I think it's really important again, to really investigate what other symptoms is your body showing you, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, you it's never just, it's never just the acne. It's never just the breakouts. And if it is, then maybe it's a topical issue we're dealing with there. Um, but long story short, you know, more, more than relying just on face mapping, we want to rely on other symptoms. Is your body showing you other symptoms that your, you know, liver maybe isn't properly or efficiently detoxing? Um, do you have, you know, crazy digestive issues? Are you only pooping once a week? Or, um, you know, are you going multiple times a day, you know, running after every meal, things like that? Um, it's really important to look at things like, you know, dig a little bit deeper. Okay. And if anybody else has questions, feel free. I have another one. <laughs> there's, there's one more in go here ahead. in the chat. Any foundations that you recommend since you had mentioned a powder was better? Oh yeah. Foundations. Um, I love the brand Alma Pure. I think it's Al Alima, A-L-I-M-A, or maybe it's just Alma Pure. Um, no, Alima Pure. And it's um, non-comedogenic, so it won't clog your pores. It's just really lovely. And they make a really nice blush as well. Okay. Any other questions, go ahead and put in the chat. When you have, when you're working with your clients, what, what's kind of like the time frame that you see maybe on average, or is it something that once they start working on some of these areas, and I know it varies from person to person, but yeah. uh, how quickly can somebody expect to see a difference or a change? And does it get worse before it gets better? That's a good question. I think there's always healing reactions. Sometimes, you know, it's very common to see things get worse before they get better, especially when you're struggling with chronic digestive issues, things like that. Um, but with skin, I usually, it's about like six to eight weeks. I like to see, start seeing an improvement with women. It can be hard, especially if your acne is more cyclical, we need to wait for each, <laughs> we need to wait for sort of each cycle to, to come around. Um, but I'd say by the second cycle, at least, you know, the first cycle, want to start seeing improvements. The second cycle starts to start feeling like, okay, I'm really seeing improvements here. Um, but so for some women, you know, it can take months. Um, healing is not, you know, we want healing, the healing process to look like this, to be totally linear. Um, but it's many, very often more like this as Carrie knows as well. Um, and so, yeah, expect that there can be some hiccups along the way. Again, it's really about identifying, you know, what are the root causes of your breakouts and acne, getting a proper, you know, plan in place in terms of both internal and the topical. Um, and, and then, you know, giving it time and patience and also, you know, being, giving yourself grace in that healing process to help calm the stress that can come along with it. Um, and again, that goes along, that goes with any sort of healing process, whether it's your skin or a chronic, you know, health condition that you've struggled with, it's a big source of stress. And we know that that's not helping that process. So we want to um, help calm that stress as well. Okay, good. Yeah, Great. So that was a very long winded answer. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's interesting too, because you also, you know, and, and I think on your website, um, you actually, we're going to put the links in the chat here. I can do that. Carrie, if you want to bring up the little spinning wheel. And again, the prize is going to be, it's the one for blemishes, right? You have a to you have three different ones and this is your most popular blend. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's high, high in a certain fatty acid called linoleic acid that again, you know, studies have shown that 
the, the skin of acne prone people tends to be deficient in, um, and that by, you know, supplementing with it topically, so really just applying it topically, it helps to decrease breakouts in acne. And it's definitely a customer favorite. Um, and so a testimony to the fact that simple and natural, just like, you know, Renee, um, can be really effective. And then what are the other two? How would you describe those? What would, sure, they, so, who would they be? Um, my beauty blend number one, I actually consider that that's like the base, the blend that I've been making for myself for ages and ages. It's not as focused on breakouts and acne, but it sort of is a, is a nice combination of it's just sort of more, I guess for, yeah, I would call it like more nor, nor, normal types of skin. So maybe you're, you've got the occasional breakout or occasional zit, um, but you're also more thinking about preventing aging, um, antioxidants, things like that. And then my formula for number beauty, blend number three is for more mature, um, and aging skin, which it needs a, not only, you know, a lot of antioxidants, but a lot more moisture because as our estrogen levels decrease, our skin moisture decreases. And so we want more deeply, um, moisturizing oils there as opposed to more lightweight. Oh, that'll be interesting. Okay, good. And I know Miranda was also hoping you can come back and, and give us more of the rest of the workshop. So that would be fun and maybe do something on aging for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And we will see you all again, hopefully next Wednesday. Thank you. Good night. Thank you thank so you. much, Nadia. Yeah, thank you for having me.